Very good. Thank you. We are going to now transfer to uh, our friends at Razorleaf. This will be Gus Leindinger, and he is going to talk about adding and removing items from an in-process change. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we've uh, Razorleaf has uh, got a toolkit that we now use for some common scenarios that show up in uh, ECOs where uh, we need to do some specific tasks with affected items after the uh, after the ECO is in work. So out of out of the box, if you were um, in this ECO, I've got a, a pretty simple uh, assembly with a few affected items. And you can see the ECO is in work. And uh, if the engineer was working on this and decided uh, that, um, actually, I think I've got my long ECO open here, I do. Uh, the, the engineer realized that there were some, um, some affected items that he needed to add on here while he was making his change. Um, he really has no ability in work to um, add additional affected items. So if, again, while he's working on this change, he realizes that um, he needs to change this additional component because it's in work, he's, he's kind of committed. He, he doesn't have any ability to add additional changes. He would have to create a new ECO and add this item as, a, as an affected item in that second ECO, and then he would complete the entire change. Uh, he kind of split that change across two, two ECOs. So he also has no ability to uh, remove affected items either. So if in another scenario, if he were, um, if, he, if the ECO had um, multiple affected items, and he realized during the course of his change that he wanted uh, that uh, item was on here, but he really didn't need to change it, he's uh, he's not, he does, he's left with um, the only ability to complete the change with that affected item. The rev bumps, even though there was no change to it, he has no ability to take that off as an affected item. So we've introduced some capabilities to um, allow both of these scenarios. So uh, in this case, uh, the CCO has uh, kind of pre-staged it, and they've asked for a design change to a, to a component to redesign it. And uh, the engineer begins to make his change. And I'm just opening up that new uh, that new revision of that affected item, and uh, he implements his design change and redesigns this for a larger diameter cylinder. And he realizes that uh, the, that increased in force in that in that cylinder is now breaking his um, his arm. So he wants to redesign this arm as well. Well, again, he has no ability to do that out of the box, but um, in this in this ECO, we've implemented a new action. Um, or I can select add item uh, add item to in work change, and it brings up a little form uh, where he can uh, search for affected item, or he can key in his affected item number if he knows it. Um, now he doesn't just have the ability to add affected items that are part of this assembly. He can add any affected item in the system that he wants. Uh, in this case, I am adding something that's already on that assembly. And I'm going to pick OK here, and you'll see that this redraws, and uh, all those same business rules that happen uh, when, an effect, when an affected item is processed to make a new revision, all those same business rules are applied on this newly, newly added affected item as well. So now I can uh, go ahead and make the change here. And uh, complete my design and fix my assembly. And go ahead and complete my change. Just, um, and of course, now I've got my complete change encapsulated and uh, in one ECO, I did not have to spin off the second ECO. And if I go look at that, uh, that that new assembly, that revised assembly, of course you can use it as you would expect. 
that uh, that component's been updated. Both of those components have been updated in that assembly. So the, the next scenario I referenced was um, if um, additional affected items, uh, there's too many affected items, the engineer wants to take, take some off. So in this case, um, this ECO, I pre-staged it, it's uh, in, in work, the affected items have been uh, manipulated, the revision Bs are already there. The engineer is uh, go ahead and uh, go, he starts to make his, his design change. And I'm just going to add, uh, make a few generations of this item um, so we can see what happens. So again, he's just iterating his design and I'm just trying to get some additional generations. I've made three, and uh, he goes off and does some other work, and he realizes uh, I, I really don't need to change this this uh, bracket weldment, and uh, he wants to take it off of this uh, this ECO. So um, if I lock this ECO, and I right click on this, I now have a new action called uh, cancel item action, and when I click this you're going to see this uh, view gets redrawn and the assembly has been uh, reverted a bit to show me that it, it has the original 220 revision A, it's released, and it added this special affected item. Um, and we do this so we can just track some history on the ECO that says, that indicates that this item was originally an affected item on here, but it was taken off. And we put some special states uh, on that, and you can see them here. And uh, I'll show you this uh, in a little more detail in a second. But uh, now I can go ahead and complete this change. And uh, and if I go look at that assembly, And we look at its bill of material. You can see that, uh, of course, the assembly's been released. It's at Rev B. Here's that uh, bracket weldment. It's uh, at A. It's released as if it was never changed. And if I look at this part and its revision history, you can get a sense of what's going on here. You know, you can, uh, the, the, this was the original released version, and then when the ECO made revision B of that, then I went and did my iterations of it, and then I canceled it. The system took the latest release, brought it forward, and um, put some special states on the first ones and last ones. But you can see that the system still captured all of that iteration that I did um, and, and canceled. And the next time that this part is revised, it will start at revision B. So if I were to put this on another ECO, and it would be as if it was never never changed, these never happened, and the next revision would be B. So the last scenario that I want to show you kind of builds on that, uh, that same uh, canceling, where uh, the engineer decides, or recognizes that this ECO was started, and it has uh, some affected items on it, but um, he realizes that this, this change should not be implemented at all, so he wants to completely cancel this ECO. So um, we've implemented a new activity on this workflow coming out of draft changes called cancel change. And when the engineer votes into cancel change, that same process I showed you just a second ago that undid or canceled the affected items, that same process happens on all of the affected items and then the ECO is, um, is canceled or closed. So um, if I were to, so again, you see that this is, I've got this staged, the affected items have been processed, revision Bs have been created, and if I were to go vote this into, into a cancel change, and I look at the impact matrix, and you see that same kind of pattern where those those items show up here, should still show here, so you can get some history and recognize what happened. But if I go look at the parts in my system, 
part 300 still at Rev A released. And if I look at it, it's build material, all Rev A components all released. And if I look at the history, you'll see that same kind of pattern where we have any, any history that was done, any iteration that was done during the change would still be, you know, so we, we captured it and would still be part of the revision history. That's it for me. Great, thank you.